Hello my dudes, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a review on the new Hogue Ballista 1. So this is a, a new knife from Hogue that came out this year. Um, actually, I believe in the last six months or maybe even sooner. Um, I know that it was, um, I believe it was premiered at the recent Blade Show. So uh, this is a pretty new knife, um, and I expect uh, some of you guys are interested in checking it out and possibly buying it, so I'm going to tell you all about this knife, and I've been carrying it uh, almost every day for a little over a week now, so I have drawn my conclusions, I have um, you know, compiled my thoughts about the knife, and I'm going to tell you what I think. But first... Let's talk about some specs. We are looking at a blade length of three and a half inches. We are looking at an overall length of eight inches. And can I just say, as someone that appreciates uh, rounded numbers, having a three and a half inch blade and an overall length of exactly eight inches, it just makes me happy for some reason. We have a blade steel material of 154 cm, and the blade stock thickness is 0.15 inches. The weight of the knife is 4.2 ounces, and the 154 cm blade steel has a hardness of 57 to 59 HRC. We have a, uh, a really good looking drop point blade. Uh, with a really, really nice tumbled stone, uh, stone tumbled, I guess you'd call it, finish. This is some of the best tumbled finish I have seen. I really, really like this finish. It just looks really good. The only other, uh, the only other stone washing finish that I like just as much uh, is on my 8020.5. Um, which is pretty similar actually now that I see it. Let's look at them together. The one on the uh, 8020.5 is a little more cloudy. If you can see that. And then on the Hoag, it's kind of more crisp. Um, each individual, you know, little spot where the uh, media bumped up against the blade and the tumbler. But yeah. Really, really like the uh, this tumbled finish on this thing. Um, it has a full um, aluminum construction on its frame, or chassis, or scales, if you will. Uh, there's no liners in this. Uh, it's just uh, two slabs of aluminum there um, with the blade sandwiched in between them. Uh, there's no backspacer, but they, they do come together in the back here to form a... Uh, at least half of the blade, kind of a, a solid uh, spine, I guess you call it. No, not a spine. Um, I don't know. Think wherever the backspacer would normally be. In this case, we have the scales coming together and meeting in the middle. Um, this uh, this knife has some uh, some milling pattern here, just uh, added grip. Uh, not a whole lot of jimping around the knife. Uh, there is a little bit here on the blade. Um, but in the choked up position, your thumb does fall right on that jimping, so I like that. It's it's good placement. Also, if you're back here, you know it, it works still. Um, it could have extended a little farther out here, but it, it's fine. It's not as bad as some some other knives that I've handled. Um, sometimes the jimping is, you know, your your thumb falls here, but the jimping is for some reason just back here, which you would never come in contact with. Uh, with your thumb, so it just it doesn't make sense. But this, in this case, uh, it, it's not too bad. It works. Um, we have a safety switch, uh, which I don't think is uh, totally necessary because the button is recessed back behind the surface of the scale. Um, so the chances of, of, you know, something bumping into that in your pocket, <coughs> excuse me, in your pocket and deploying it uh, is very, very rare. Um, but I guess it's just a more you know peace of mind kind of thing and also it locks in the open position um, and this is I think a little more 
utilitarian than locking it in the closed position because you know if you're doing some real hard cutting and you're squeezing on this blade you're, you know uh, you don't want to accidentally push that button and have the blade uh, close on you uh, or disengage so uh, that makes sense to me uh, to lock it in the open position if you're really doing some hard cutting with this thing and speaking of hard cutting um, this thing uh, is really comfortable to hold on to when you're doing hard, some hard you know extended period types of cutting um, back here very comfortable I don't feel the clip at all um, up here I love to choke up on knives as you know and this one it feels real good choking up on it let me tell you um, it just it feels great um, the finger choil here is uh, large enough for your finger you don't feel crammed in there uh, it's just great um, while we're talking about this area here let's talk about this sharpening choil now I don't really like it um, in my opinion that is the the one flaw on this knife uh, aside from that I really really like it but it's not only looks kind of funky but when you're cutting material this happened to me uh, you know, a couple times is you'll be cutting material and the cardboard or whatever will reach that point and it'll get caught and you won't continue slicing it'll your blade will stop there because it falls into that choil um, so that's the main problem with having it there um, not to mention it looks funky um, I think they should have just you know had the edge come down further and then just had it flow right into the finger choil here and I think their reasoning for doing this is to protect your finger here um, from sliding up and getting cut but I have a lot of knives with these with this type of choke up position uh, forward finger choil and I have never ever cut my finger on the blade there on the heel of the blade ever it's never happened um, so while I understand why they did it this way, I don't necessarily agree with with it in general. I wish that they had, like I said, had it flow right into the finger choil. But, um, you know, as long as you're just aware of not letting the material slide too far back this way when you're cutting, then it's fine. Um, let's talk about the pocket clip really quick. I really like this pocket clip. Um, I've never seen one before with like this type of ribbing on it, I guess you'd call it. Um, basically, you know, they just cut slits and then popped them out basically from the back. So uh, it's pretty grippy. Um, when you're reaching into your pocket to grab this thing, um, you're not slipping off of it. it. It actually feels good. At first, when I saw it, I was a little skeptical. I thought it might be a little gimmicky. Um, but then I tried it and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, we don't have too much of a bill on that pocket clip. Um, it comes in and out of the pocket easily even on my car hearts it still um, it still passes by that seam easily uh, in and out um, it's not recessed but um, I haven't run into a problem with it you know seating all the way down into my pocket even on my thick car hard pants so uh, really like the clip it works great let's talk about the action next this thing fires hard man it fires real hard and at least on some automatics that I've owned okay let me, let me start that over um, how I kind of test the quality of a, a side opening automatic knife is does it still have spring tension even way up here what I mean by that is if I bring the blade to close to its open position and then let go is it still gonna spring the rest of the way um, on some more poorly made side opening automatics let's look at this Calmigo for example um, if I bring it to that point and let go it, it's it doesn't open all the way the, the spring basically only has tension from here to about there um, and then it's, it's just loose which doesn't it doesn't affect it opening really because this thing has never misfired um, but I think just, you know, to get that strength um, of, of the opening, um, 
you need to have that spring, you know, pushing the blade the entire way. Um, and it's just a nice detail. I just, I like to see that, um, you know, it, it tells me that they're paying attention and they, they want this thing to fire out uh, hard and fast, which it, it does very well. Um, yeah, um, so left-handed users, obviously um, just as easy to use instead of using your thumb to actuate the button, you're using your pointer finger. Um, yeah, it works just fine. Yeah, this thing fires hard. You can see my hand <laughs> absorbing the the shock of the blade hitting the the uh, stop pin. Yeah, it fires fast. Uh, you can close it one-handed. Um, takes a little more time, and it's kind of awkward. Um, I usually just use my other hand. Let's do like uh, let's do some size comparisons. How about that? Um, let's bring out the Calamigo again. Very similar looking knife. Black aluminum, you know. Just much smaller. How about some Pilars? Pilar 3. And the Pi Large. It's a full size knife, as you can tell. The PM2. Let's see. Yep, just about the same size. At least very close. Betch made bug out. There you go. And then how about the Microtech UTX85 and the Demco 8020.5. There you have it. Now one thing I do want to mention is Check this out. I didn't touch this edge yet. This is a mirror edge straight from the factory. I've never seen that before on a knife. It's really, really cool. You get a mirror edge from the factory and this thing is very sharp. Very, very sharp. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I like the, uh, I guess it's this kind of a stone washing on the the pivot there and on the button uh, on all the hardware except the uh, is those T6s? No, those are T8s. Um, I'm just noticing now those T8s are really shallow which I don't really like. I wish they were deeper um, but it's deep on the pivot so that's good. Um, I just don't usually like to see really shallow um, Torx heads because they they just strip a lot easier, um, but that's fine. You know, as long as you're careful, you'll be fine. Well, guys, I think that'll do it. That's the Hogue Ballista One, American-made, really really quality knife. Um, this knife is 162 bucks. So, um, as far as very quality made. USA made um, automatic knives that is a, a pretty decent price um, I really recommend this thing um, you guys are gonna like it fires hard fires fast really comfortable don't have any complaints except that little uh, sharpening trail issue but you know that's it aside from that this thing is freaking rad alrighty thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video adios